Welcome to Destined Nation. I'm Pastor Jodel and this is Monday Messengers. So wonderful ambassadors of Christ, let us all worship the Lord. Yes, let's all stand and let's worship the Lord together. Give thanks, give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For His good is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and outstretched arms, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong. God is with us forever and ever. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us forever and ever. Forever. Sing His love and doers. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love, his love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. Sing praise. My name is Bettina and this is Verse of the Week. So for our verse, let's go grab our Bibles and open it to Ephesians 3 verse 16. In the English Standard Version, it says there, That according to the riches of His glory, He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being. So one more time, let's read this verse all together. Ephesians 3 verse 16. That according to the riches of His glory, He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being. So for our challenge every Monday messengers, we encourage all of you teens to post our verse of the week. In this case, Ephesians 3 verse 16 in your Facebook timelines. And of course, to their hashtags, Destined Nation, Monday Messengers, and I accept the challenge. So let this be a reminder for every one of us, especially for those who have resumed with their classes, that God is our number one source of strength and He is the one who will sustain us all throughout this school year. So stay tuned for tomorrow's challenge and see you again next week for our Monday Messengers. And always remember, you are destined for Christ! Hi there, teens! I'm Pastor Charlie and this is Evangelism 101. I am with Una. 
Hi teens, I'm Una and Aliana. Hi, I'm Aliana. Today we will be learning about the importance of sharing the word of God. But first, let's ask ourselves a question. What is our motivation in sharing the gospel? In Jeremiah 36 verse 7, perhaps they will bring their petition before the Lord and each will turn from his wicked ways. Jeremiah had this hope that the people of God will turn back to him even though he is during at that time in prison. And to know that Jeremiah was a shy type boy in his earlier days, as he says in Jeremiah 1 verses 5 to 8, he actually told the Lord, I cannot speak for you. I am too young. But the Lord replied, Jeremiah 1 verses 7 to 8, Do not say I am too young. For you must go wherever I send you, and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. During this time, Jeremiah has fully grown spiritually, from being a shy type boy to someone who boldly desires what God also desires for the people. He never stopped reaching out to the Israelites even though he is confined at the courtyard of the guard. He still reached out to them through Baruch. Now, let's look at what should we do with the Word of God. First, we should learn from the Word of God. It says in Deuteronomy 5 verse 1, And Moses summoned all of Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and the rules I speak in your hearing today, and you shall learn them and be careful to do them. The word learn in Hebrew is laman, which means to learn or to be trained for. Teens, as we are all growing up, we should not be trained by the wisdom of the world or the latest gay drama or the latest game, but instead we should be trained in the word of God. That's right. Secondly, we are to be careful in doing that. In the same verse, we see that we do not just learn the word of God, but we are to be careful in doing it. it says here in James 1 verse 32, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. It is important that as we know and learn that we should not steal, lie, gossip, and all sorts of things that are against the will of God. It is important that we are not doing it. Lastly, for today, the Word of God should always be in our hearts. Deuteronomy 6 verse 6 says, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. Always remember, teens, that whatever we fill our hearts with, that's what comes out of our mouths. According to Matthew 12 verse 34, For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, as we fill our hearts with the Word of God, then, as we share the gospel or someone is in need of advice, what we can give them is the word of God. Remember that is that the word of God that will change people, not our opinion or our own words. It says here in Hebrews 4 verse 12, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So teens, you are not too young to share the gospel. Just like Jeremiah, he just filled his heart with the word of God that it came to a point that he cannot stop talking about it. He says in Jeremiah 20 verse 9, If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart as it were a burning fire, shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in. And I cannot. He cannot stop talking about the word of God, sharing the gospel, letting the people know how good God is. So teens, fill our hearts with the word of God. This has been Evangelism 101. You are destined for Christ.
Hello, hello to you teens! Welcome back to Teens in Tune! I am Pastora Cristel and once again, we have another song featured for you that is definitely Bible-based and the singers are solid Christians. For today's episode, that is the song Joy Comes in the Morning by Baylor Wilson. At 26, Baylor Wilson has already lived a life most people only dreamed about all before graduating from college. But according to Baylor, these life-making moments were just a precursor to the abundant life she found when she met Jesus. Wow, when asked what exactly happened that prompted her to start writing songs about Jesus, she joyfully exclaims, Jesus happened. She left fame, success because Jesus happened. It was in a church camp her friend invited her into that she met her Savior Jesus Christ. And from that time on, she wrote songs for him alone. Wow, her first single is the song Jesus Happened that talks about the wonderful change God brought in her life. And our song featured for today entitled Joy Comes in the Morning encourages the listeners to learn to trust more in Jesus. A reminder that no matter no matter what you are going through right now, teens, God has prepared a victory for you. There is definite joy waiting for you. So don't give up, teens. Amen. Psalm 30 verse 5, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. Let us listen to this song. I hope you like our song feature for today. That is Joy Comes in the Morning by Baylor Wilson. You can check it out on our Spotify playlist entitled Destination Teens in Tune. Always remember teens that it is important that we choose the songs that we'll listen to. That God's word always be our standard in everything. You are destined for Christ. God bless you. Hi teens. Welcome to Compass. I'm Pastor Judel and this is Monday Messengers. And every Monday, we are talking about how are we to become an ambassador of Christ Jesus. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 to 7 says, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. So, have you ever encountered a good news that you would like to tell everybody about? Like, for example, you've heard the news that you are going to graduate cum laude or the first of your class. Isn't it something that you would like to tell every member of your family and all the people that you know? Because it is so much of a good news that you want to be a herald of this awesome news. Well, let's talk about the gospel as the best news that you could ever tell others about. In Isaiah 40 verse 9, it says here, Go up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not, say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. So we are to be heralds or speakers of the good news. As you can see, with voices lifted up to the Lord, going up a high place in order to echo a good news that, of course, the goodness of the Lord. So, we are to go up to a high place so that the good news that we are proclaiming will echo and resound. Isaiah 52 verse 7, How beautiful upon the mountains! So, where are they proclaiming the good news? up on a mountain in a place where it will echo or resound are the feet of him who brings good news who publishes peace who brings good news of happiness 
who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Amazing. The good news is also a message that brings peace and happiness to people. Now, we are to use our strength to tell people about this good news. Jesus did. Luke chapter 3 verse 18 says, So with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. So Jesus exhorted. He took time, he took the effort, and he went from one place to another. Luke 4 verse 43, But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. So Jesus labored and used his strength in order to tell people about the good news. Luke 8 verse 1, Soon afterward, he went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the goodness of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. And so we see even his apostles are with him as he went from cities and villages proclaiming and bringing the good news of the gospel. And so we know that we are to use our strength, our time, and everything that we can in order for us to proclaim the good news to people. Also, we should not be afraid. We must be filled with boldness and courage as we preach the good news. Luke chapter 2 verse 10. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. And so, we know that we are not only to use our strength, our energy, our time and effort to bring the good news and bring it to a place where it will echo and resound high up high the mountain where everybody will be able to hear it. But also we learned that we are also to not be afraid to preach it with confidence and with boldness that comes from the Lord. Now, what happens when people hear the good news that you are proclaiming? Isaiah 61 verse 1 says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach or bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. So as you can see, it has a great effect in people's lives. Now, this is Jesus proclaiming. He said, Proverbs 15 verse 30, The light of the eyes rejoices the heart, and the good news refreshes the bones. Proverbs 25 verse 25, Like cold water to a thirsty soul, so is the good news from a far country. And so we see the effects of the good news in people's lives. It brings freedom, liberty, it brings salvation from something that, that is of an impending doom. All right? It brings healing to a broken heart. It brings healing to a broken body. It refreshes the bones. And it is like a cold water to a thirsty soul. Acts 8 verse 12, But when they believed Philip as he preached the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. And it produces a changed life. And that is very, very important. The good news will change people's lives. Not only the condition that they are in today, but their future. Because there is eternity waiting for them in heaven. Now let us pray for this great privilege to preach the good news, to be a herald of the good news, to be given to us, especially during this time that you are about to go to back to school. Let us pray for you, Eugene's. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, and I lift to you, O God, the ambassadors of Christ, the mighty teens. I pray that this year, you will give us boldness and confidence to preach the good news of the gospel of God to every classmate that we have, to every professor that we have. And we pray that you will open up their hearts, that they will receive you, God, and that they will be genuinely saved and their lives will be changed forever. And everything, that the, the bondages will be broken off their lives and their lives will be lived for you. Thank you, Lord, for this great opportunity that you have given to us. We love you, Lord, and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, teens, for being here with us at Destination. See you again tomorrow, 5 o'clock. God bless you.